Well, hello, hello, my beautiful, sensitive people. So as you can see, I am packing up. I am on my way out the door, off to Portland, Oregon. I checked back with the apartment. Uh, it looks like I am about a less than a mile away, so I'm not too worried. I think it's gonna be fine. They said, don't worry, it's nowhere near you. So I'm like, okay, I won't worry. All right, so I wanna do some remote viewings about a couple of things and then tie it all together. And I also want to again give a shout out to the amazing Mark Rhodes, who um, has been adopted by uh, uh, Linda G and myself as like the coolest, coolest friend. But anyway, uh, so he and I were hanging out tonight talking and I went into that meditative state and I started again doing a remote. And so tonight's remote is based on a sharing uh, meditating with another person, which is something, which is a type of remote viewing you can do when both of you are in a relaxed state and then you just begin to share uh, messages or images. And some people will actually pray like this, certain schools of prayer, that when they feel called to do so, they say something so that the collective can speak. All right, so uh, in this remote, it looks like what is starting to happen. The first thing I, uh, I was asked, uh, we got into the conversation, if I would take a look at Jared and Yvonne Cox. And uh, I found myself in the lower sections of the White House where the kitchen area is. And it looks like you go this way and then you take left through some, some kitchen area, uh, not in the kitchen, but by the kitchen. And it, I saw uh, Jared and Ivanka, and it looked like the feds wanted to speak to them or that there was questioning going on between Jared, Ivanka and the feds. So how I work as a remote viewer is I see an energy or I see a situation or a scene. It doesn't mean it really happened. It could just be a story that my subconscious has created. And then I have to be very young in and say, well, why is my brain thinking like that? Sometimes it literally happens and then we all get freaked out and then we have a good laugh about it. Um, so uh, this is the image. So uh, the feds behind them in the basement of the White House looking nervous. Ivanka was ahead of Jared. Um, so then I followed that stream of energy and I found myself back to the Mueller investigation. And Mueller was part of a larger scheme of investigations that were going on, a series of investigations going on by the FBI, which were broken up into smaller investigations involving money law, uh, laundering, traf human trafficking, uh, Bitcoin, etc. So now when we see the protesters and the violence happening, who are the professional anarchists, the people that are being paid by in Bitcoin, this is what the remote shows. And that Bitcoin can be traced back to foreign governments. So the Russians uh, put up a front that they're gonna be anarchists because anarchy is great and the money can be traced back to Russia. And actually the Russians have been infiltrating the anarchists. And this is just another wing of trying to create division. But basically where there is, is anarchy, there, uh, uh, if those people are being paid, it's being traced back uh, to uh, Russia. And there, and again, this is why they were trying to cut off the Bitcoin. So, so what basically happened is that uh, Mueller had a basic theory about what was going on and how the, uh, some of the money laundering was going on. And it goes back to the fact that Donald Trump and everybody else that was part of the upper echelons was blackmailing one another. And we'll go talk about that in a second. But Basically, Roger Stone, Trump, everybody had dirt on everybody else, just like Skull and Bones. You join Skull and Bones, they have to get dirt on you. Okay, now we can have something to hang over your head. That's the gentleman's agreement. So part of this gentleman's agreement, Ivanka Trump and some of the kids are signing documents. Talk about being gaslit by a parent. So they're signing documents that are basically fraud uh, and tax evasion and you know, they're committing these crimes but the signatures the trump signatures are not donald trump's well i didn't sign it ivanka signed it so they knew the feds knew what they were going to find when they got a hold of certain uh, tax documents that uh the trump uh, organization was withholding from the feds so the they basically created all these indictments all this 
uh, going forward of these legal cases, including perhaps against the president in the event that he's going to be kicked out of office. But um, so they were preparing all of this stuff. And then once they had access to those uh, legal documents, those financial documents, which proved the uh, theory to be correct, they could then move in with indictments. And that seems to be what has happened somehow, some way, perhaps because of something that they worked out with the Supreme Court and the recent decisions about access to taxes. Somehow the feds were able to get information or access to proof of these crimes, and they were not able to do that until they had those documents. Well, now the feds have those documents. So that brings us forward to the remote about people doing deals with one another. Uh, it's, I think it's too late in the game now to resign, but it goes back to that song we keep hearing, sooner or later you're gonna be mine. Right? Sooner or later you're gonna be fine, right? Because Robert Mueller always gets his man. So. If he had broken these investigations up, lined up all these indictments, waited and waited and waited because they knew what, we know what those documents are going to show. No, no, they're not going to show that. Get us the documents. Oh, no, no, no. You go through the courts, delay, delay, delay. Give us the documents, delay. We got the documents. It proved. And now we can go forward with these indictments. Okay. The second remote is about Ghislaine Maxwell. And... Uh, when I was doing this meditation, Spirit was just reminding everybody to just go back and look at the previous tapes on this subject going back a year ago because uh, now this is starting to make a little bit more sense. So we did a remote on Ghislaine Maxwell and Ghislaine Maxwell said that she loved, uh, she loved uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein, she understood him, that he was sick, you know, uh, but she had compassion for him. And she said it was very difficult for her to admit that she was the one that had betrayed him. So we now know that Ghislaine Maxwell had a home in France that just got released a couple of days ago. And Epstein was leaving France, got on the plane, and then I believe from, I don't think it was England, I think it was France, and I think he was arrested at that point. So in the remote we had done on Ghislaine Maxwell, she convinces him that it's safe to go back. So this looks like Ghislaine Maxwell made a deal to uh, help in the capture of Epstein in exchange for some kind of immunity or safety. And then perhaps this was reneged. And so that's the shock I feel as Ghislaine Maxwell. I'm the one that betrayed him. I'm the one that convinced him to come back. He was hanging out with me in France. He, so there's this feeling like, what the hell? I'm not gonna be arrested. And then she gets arrested. So when doing a case study of uh, Epstein as a, uh, if you are a heart center, if you're a pro training as a professional empath, say you are a psychologist or a psychotherapist and you've decided that you're gonna, damn it, I'm gonna go into training, I'm gonna learn this technique. Or specifically, you're a criminal psychologist or uh, somebody working in, in criminal justice, definitely worthwhile to learn this technique. So uh, tonight I'm gonna show you uh, what profiling looks like for a, a professional empath. And if you are somebody who uh, uh, works in those fields, you may want to uh, consider learning this technique. All right, so uh, when I go into the uh, uh, mental state that is Jeffrey Epstein, I see him on the stand and he's being questioned by people regarding accusations. Uh, I think he was sued. Uh, there was a, um, civil suits about sexual assault, et cetera. And you could see like the smug look on his face. And so when I went into the meditation and put myself in his shoes and I'm asking myself, what were you thinking at that time? What were you thinking at the time you were sitting there being questioned? And Epstein said that he thought these people were ants that they're nothing, that they're nobody. Remember we talked about the slavery mentality, that the slave master believes that you are nothing. So in this remote, Epstein is saying, you are nothing, you are nothing, you are ants. Like, do you have any idea who I am? And then this is exactly word for word for what I, from what I heard inside my mind as Jeffrey Epstein. I rule the men that rule you. I rule the men that rule you. So because I rule the men that rule you, I am Caesar. I build a temple to myself. I am the God of the gods. So you have the gods 
which are uh, a prince from Saudi Arabia or a prince from uh, uh, Dubai, and you invite these people to the island, and it's part of a CIA operation, and the, the CIA is completely kosher with it, and what you're trying to do is get contraband or information about people of interest who you suspect could be involved in things like terrorism, uh, sending money uh, to help uh, 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 send bombs out of Gaza. So, so you've justified this, this operation because these are, the, these are not nice people. These are, the, these are, these are people that are they're doing bad things. So you justify it by having this huge party and you take all of these uh, underage children, you dress them up as Grecian slaves and you send them about and you let these gods, these aristocrats, because we're nothing, do whatever they want in these rooms while Epstein casually films them. And now he's got dirt on them. He's got dirt on the guy from Saudi Arabia. He's got dirt on the guy from here, there, and everywhere. So how did it get leaked? How did the operation get leaked? It seems that the operation gets leaked through the Ukrainian, uh, through the Ukrainian mafia, which is associated with a group, a, a certain group of um, a Hasidic sect of Jewish people that had to do business with them. They didn't want to do business with these thugs. <laughs> when I went into the room boat, it's like, look, they said that if I gave them my lunch money, they wouldn't punch me in the face. So I gave them my lunch money. Then we got to talking and <laughs> He became friendly and he still took my money and didn't punch me in the face, but he became friendly. So that's kind of the history of the Ukrainian mafia uh, with the Jews, Jewish people of the Ukraine. Um, sorry, I almost went off. So uh, it's this relationship of these two misfits uh, coming together and et cetera, et cetera. But there seems to be some security leak between the Ukrainian mafia that's also doing deals with Russia, et cetera. And uh, there, this whole thing that was Epstein is going to be leaked. So when you go into the remote about Epstein's suicide, this is not why I saw Epstein murdered. The remote we saw prior to the suicide was somebody sitting across from Epstein. You can go back and look at the remotes prior to his suicide. We saw that saying to him, you're going to have to, to take your own life. You're gonna have to commit suicide. So if you go back to Ghislaine Maxwell, Ghislaine Maxwell, was filmed holding the CIA op book saying that when a CIA operative is caught, they're told that they have to kill themselves and if they don't kill themselves, we will take you out. So basically in that remote, Epstein uh, attempts to take his own life. He fails, he winds up in the psych ward. He has another meeting with the people. They show him the proper way to kill himself. He adjusts the way he attempts to kill himself and in that remote he succeeds. Um, but I'm not gonna go into details about how he does that. Um, so that is what it looked like in the remote, was that uh, he, he lives this horrible, terrible life. He has this addiction. He says this hell will never end, this hell will never end. And then this one nice thing that's gonna guarantee that he gets to go to heaven is that he's gonna out these people um, or he's going to, um, uh, he's going to uh, compromise these people so that uh, Israel and the United States, etc will save lives. So the justification here is, uh, if you uh, continue to send bombs via the Sinai, I'm going to send your brother, the king, this film footage of you doing this to this per child. So you can imagine the kind of power that, that Epstein wielded over these individuals. And that seems to be the scheme. The fear here is that to some extent, Americans will find out the degree to which the CIA was not only complicit, but benefited uh, from the operation. So those are the remotes, <sighs> very intense and pretty dark. And this is why when people say, well, Whimsy, why don't you go, why don't you go into the cages with the children? Uh, understand when you're saying that to an empath, just think about what you're asking. I think everybody that saw the remotes from two weeks ago now understands that um, there's an aspect of this type of empathy that's sacred, and we shouldn't use it as a parlor trick, but as an opportunity to learn empathy and compassion towards one another. All right. Thanks a lot, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Peace out.